Hello, I'm Vakar Qureshi. I'm a professor of medicine at uh, Baylor College of Medicine in Houston, Texas. I'm going to talk to you about hemorrhoid disease. As you are well aware, hemorrhoid disease and in fact a lot of anorectal disease that is benign can be managed entirely by the gastroenterologist and should be. Hemorrhoid disease is extremely common. In fact, about 50% uh, of the population over the age of 50 has some type of symptom from hemorrhoid disease. So when you get to see patients with hemorrhoid disease, uh, it is really important that we examine them carefully, that we know how to examine them to make the diagnosis, to be able to differentiate internal from external hemorrhoids and to rule out the possibility of an anal fissure being the cause of your patient's symptoms. Uh, so a good anorectal exam in your office will very often give you the diagnosis, particularly if you can use an anoscope, which again is extremely easy to use. Hemorrhoid disease usually presents either with intermittent bleeding noted on uh, the toilet paper, which is painless, uh, or a prolapse uh, when the patient describes mucosa or a bulge uh, on wiping, uh, which may reduce spontaneously uh, or may not uh, and have to be pushed back. A good digital rectal exam will frequently uh, rule out the possibility of anal fissure, the treatment of which is different, and it is unwise to proceed with hemorrhoid banding when you have a patient with anorectal fissure. When you apply a good technique for banding, your patient should feel minimal discomfort after the procedure. And if your patient complains of pain soon after application of bands, then you've probably either got too much colon wall, particularly the muscularis uh, mucosa in the area banded, uh, or you have banded too low uh, to include the dentate line. And it is critical to make sure that you're well above the dentate line because when you suction the mucosa, you frequently pull the, the distal anal mucosa or dentate line into your banding uh, device. And then the patient uh, complains of pain. So it is not appropriate, of course, to just send the patient home if they're in significant pain. And it is my practice to ask them uh, to describe out of 10 how bad their pain is. And certainly if it is over a three over 10, I will re-examine them to loosen the bands or even remove them if their pain is significant. Some patients, particularly those with uh, significant irritable bowel syndrome symptoms, tolerate banding less well. And I tell them beforehand that they might feel a pressure in their lower abdomen and that we could uh, go with infrared coagulation, which does not involve banding. If they are uncomfortable after the first band application. So banding has two functions. One, it prevents prolapse by tacking the mucosa to the side of the rectal wall, and it causes the hemorrhoids to shrink by interrupting the blood flow into the hemorrhoids. So it works in those two ways, and it is very effective. One of the rare complications of hemorrhoid banding is pelvic sepsis and this can be lethal and so we generally give our patients uh, written instructions on what to do if there are any signs of impending pelvic 
infection or sepsis, and these include uh, fever, chills, rigors, severe pain that starts out of the blue, inability to urinate. Uh, if any of those happen within the neck, within a couple of weeks of banding, our patients have uh, a phone number and an address and they go immediately to the uh, emergency room to get evaluated. And if pelvic sepsis is suspected, of course, the management is aggressive uh, for a good outcome. It's quite easy to set up your own hemorrhoid clinic and uh, hemorrhoid banding is quick and fast. And uh, should you decide to open your own clinic, I would suggest that you uh, put aside about half a day for just anorectal disease where patients that call in with anorectal symptoms uh, come in and are evaluated with anoscopy and banded if necessary. I hope you will incorporate this in your practice um, and uh, so that you don't send patients off uh, to the surgeon because most of them don't need surgery and it is well within your realm to take care of most benign anorectal disease. Thank you for listening.